near the hip and get into an extension as oh, yeah. opposed to your translation like yeah. that. Yeah. Would that do pretty much the same thing? Ross, yeah. <clears throat> Femoral ass tabular hip syndrome or femoral ass tabular impingements. Mm -hmm. um, options for people that aren't getting uh, basically any results from conservative care. People that are going inside the joint and basically non surgical. Right. So the corticosteroid injections inside the joint, physiotherapy, that kind of stuff. Is this, um, are you asking more about a functional? FAI or a true like cam pincer deformity? Non cam pincer. <clears throat> so I guess the if they came in with imaging, which a lot of them do, because yeah. they've already failed everything. Right. Then they theoretically they would have found a cam pincer deformity mm -hmm. on imaging. Mm -hmm. And so we would presumably be dealing with a functional <clears throat> issue. Mm -hmm. Or common things that you see are for pain that look like FAI. Right. So it, let's say we, uh, we'll take this in steps. Let's say we rule out other things and we actually think this is a, uh, a function, what I would call a functional FAI, meaning it's not a structural FAI in that you've actually got a camera pincer deformity that's, um, you know, actually abutting against the head of the femur. So it's functional. The, the generally what uh, has been my experience with it is that the head of the femur has been anterior, tr anteriorly translated in relation to the acetabulum, mm -hmm. okay? That then puts, because the way, and I wish we had bones in here, but that essentially what it does is it takes two parts of the head of the femur and the acetabulum and approximates them more closely so that when you go into flexion, you end up pinching. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then obviously you're going to pinch labrum and joint capsule, which is part of the pain that's occurring. So I think of it in terms of a, uh, I don't want to say bony misalignment in the sense that like, oh, just an adjustment is going to resolve that. Because obviously the patients that come to us have usually gone through chiropractic um, and that kind of stuff. And so I <clears throat> think of it in, in two aspects. One is the muscles that are attaching onto the femur that can anteriorly translate the femur could be involved. One of those could be psoas, right? Because the way psoas is coming off the pelvis, attaching onto the femur, if that gets short, yes, you're gonna have a change in the low back, but you can also have a mild translation of uh, the femur. And then I also think about, uh, well, if the femur is being able to be pulled anteriorly, similar to like with a shoulder, if a shoulder dislocates uh, anteriorly, like, yeah, we're going to have issues with the ligament on the front, but what about the posterior capsule, right? So maybe that the posterior capsule and the posterior aspect of the ligaments aren't taut enough to stop that anterior translation of the femur. Um, so generally what I do is I'll do uh, prolo or PRP and I'll specifically target the posterior aspect of the joint, making sure I hit the acetabulum and the surgical neck to try and actually get the capsule. And then the other is a, um, is a uh, posterior distraction, which um, I actually learned this from uh, Kelly Starrett. So this is a... Basically how I uh, walk patients through this is you're going to find a, a, a soft slash hard surface. You're gonna rest your knee onto that hard surface and you wanna try and put as much weight as you can through this hip joint. And so you're gonna end up coming off the other foot and usually I just have them wrap it behind so that they're resting in and not holding this up. And then from here, it's literally just trying to relax, and I, I do two minutes aside minimum, trying to relax, and what you'll feel is you'll actually feel the posterior capsule, because that posterior capsule is, while it doesn't have the integrity, it's also really locked down. And so you can actually get some, uh, some increased uh, translation of that head of the femur in the acetabulum by doing this posterior distraction. And so usually what I'll do um, as a test with patients is if they come in, they have this, they'll say, okay, let's do this in office right now and let's do just one side and then let's retest your squat. If they do the, if they retest their squat and the side, we, and let's say it's bilateral, 
the side we didn't uh, do anything on, if that remains painful, but the side we did something on like drastically reduces, then that's going to be confirmation for me that we can impact this by just trying to help relocate the head of the femur more posterior in the acetabulum. And I'm guessing this is like, we're trying to move this like three, four millimeters. Like right. it's not a, a huge thing, <clears throat> but it's got to come from the neuromuscular system, the ligaments, like all that stuff. And so it's generally how I would approach it. Okay. And then for at home care after that, would you just strengthen the glutes, like glute max, try to posteriorly translate it and then <clears throat> mobility in the anterior. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Anterior hip mobility. Uh, so it'll be psoas, uh, rec fem, and the posterior hip distraction, and then strengthen, even strengthening erectors, strengthening glutes, strengthening hamstrings, everything that is on that posterior chain that's going to help create tension to keep that posterior. Okay. Yeah. Do you use a uh, um, resistant band? To, do you ever do that resistant band where you lock it up near the hip and get into an extension as oh, yeah. a posterior translation like yeah. that? Yeah. Would that do pretty much the same thing? Um... <coughs> I have, I have seen the, the knee driver do much more in a shorter amount of time. Simpler too. Yeah. <clears throat> then getting the band around and getting into that lunge position. Cause in that position too, then you've got a lot of play that you've got with the pelvis that can change where you're going to loosen and things like right, that. Right, right. Um, if someone's more CrossFit oriented and like using bands for mobility is like, like that's already a part of their nature. Yeah. I'll include that. But if it's just someone who doesn't then just doing this and instead of having them fiddle around with bands getting one that's too strong they put it on they fly backwards they yeah. Just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh but i think the posterior hip mobilization is is huge for that okay yeah and then what about common uh issues that refer pain and mimic fai or functional fai uh si okay. i'd say is probably number one okay um, and that's just because, uh, you know, when patients are in the positions that are going to generally aggravate FAI, right? A deep squat, for example, or just sitting, uh, with too much flexion is you're placing more strain on that SI joint, especially the ligaments yeah. okay. and that, and plus SI can so commonly refer over to that anterior hip as it wraps. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably the number one. Um, I don't think I've ever seen facets refer to uh or mimic an fai although i've had facets refer to the legs but never mimic an fai um and probably part of that <clears throat> is because when you uh go into a squat your facet joints are going to open up a yeah, little bit yeah yeah um any peripheral neuropathy is that commonly or um yeah, so you can have uh, ilio. It's usually ilio inguinal and genital femoral yeah. that you're gonna see, and and ilio hypogastric mm -hmm. that you can see. Um, uh, most people will will actually think it's anterior femoral cutaneous, but anterior femoral cutaneous usually actually starts about here for sensation. This part up here of the hip joint proper is uh, more ilio inguinal, uh, femoral, yeah, yeah, genital femoral uh, and ilio hypogastric. And so I've had that I can remember I've had uh, three patients that were like their FAI responded to that and we didn't have to go to do prolo. Um, I had one patient who actually she had a, uh, a true uh, cam deformity and we did we tried perineural at first and she got you know two hours of relief and then it came back we did it again she got two hours so uh, we knew that there was we needed to address deeper we did prolo uh, and tromiel uh, for one round or two rounds of treatment and she didn't get any better. And then so this is actually the last time I did a steroid injection, but I did about a quarter dose of a steroid into the hip joint and resolved it. Hmm. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't seen her as a patient in probably three years. So I don't know if it came back, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was at least nine months when I had talked with her hmm. after that. That the pain stayed away so okay so again i think it, and that's it's funny it's the last time i've done a steroid shot and that was probably four years ago yeah <clears throat> because i was still a student then but um yeah that's kind of how i would approach it okay and you know genito femoral and ilio inguinal intravenous do they tend to happen 
somewhere along the posterior abdominal wall, or is it pretty local, like close to the iliopendinal ligament? Yeah. So, while so um, let's see, ilio. And I think they both are going to pass through uh, deep to where iliohypogastric does. I think genital femoral is a little more anteriorly when it comes through the deep abdominal layer, but through the superficial, I think is where you're going to get most entrapments. Yeah. <clears throat> just because of, of how much fascial tension you can have kind of over the ilioinguinal ligament and okay. things like that. Yeah. Cool. This is so bad. It's usually a common problem associated with that. Yeah, I think yeah. for that exact reason. Yeah. Like yeah. The, yeah, just thinking like if they've been through PT and that kind of stuff. Yeah, usually PT would really resolve a lot of the muscular. Yeah, theoretically. Depends on what they did. Depend yeah, again quality right there's, there's in every profession you're always going to have that range <clears throat> so when it comes to gr like groin pain syndrome <clears throat> or just groin pain yeah um aside from evaluating like strain of the muscles that mm -hmm. that can be involved you know what refer what common referrals do we see with groin pain in regards to low back pathology is that something <clears throat> and are you referring to like anti like pubic symphysis groin or are you referring to no more lateral more like in the hip crease type of groin pain oh so that'll that's that, kind of the same answer as that so okay. the things that are gonna that are not hip joint that can refer pain to the anterior aspect of the hip is usually SI mm -hmm. and then the peripheral nerves in that area so ilioinguinal uh, genofemoral ilio hypogastric.